provide input to the county on what the environmental effects are associated with the project, issues, specific issues they believe should be addressed, as well as suggesting mitigation measures and alternatives. It's a very public process. CEQA does not provide a recommendation on the advisability of whether the county should approve or deny a project based on the environmental effects identified. It is an objective analysis. It does not require that a project be denied just because adverse effects to the environment are identified. Rather, it allows that the county can identify overriding considerations, identifying that there may be benefits associated with the general plan update that would outweigh potential adverse environmental effects that would be associated with its implementation. And lastly, CEQ was not intended to address economic or social concerns unless there is clearly an environmental effect, meaning a physical change to the environment that would occur as a result of the economic or social concerns. And I apologize that I keep looking back and forth here. I'll lift. Actually, no, I won't. I don't want to unhook anything. The environmental impact report that will be prepared for the general plan update is a programmatic document. It analyzes, will analyze, the impacts of the general plan update at a programmatic level, at a very broad level. It looks at the implementation of the elements associated with the general plan update, what it means to implement the policies and actions that are included in the general plan update. It also looks at the environmental effects of implementing the various maps and diagrams, implementing the land use map, implementing the circulation diagram, what physical changes would occur to the environment associated with those. As I said, it discusses broad environmental issues and it affects a large geographic area of the unincorporated county. The program EIR will minimize the environmental processing of future environmental documents. It identifies programmatic mitigation measures that can be applied at the policy level, so it will make it easy when the county is reviewing future applications that are consistent with the general plan to identify whether or not those are broadly addressed in the general plan EIR. It provides the cumulative analysis for projects that are consistent with the general plan, and it also addresses alternatives to the proposed land use map, so it helps you look at some of the options and land use changes that could reduce environmental impacts, which is helpful when you're looking at future project requests. The mitigation measures included in the general plan EIR are first well, let me backtrack just a little bit. The general plan team and the EIR team work together. So as they're drafting general plan policies and as they were meeting with the steering committee, we paid attention to what was going on, made suggestions regarding the policies and actions, and then as those are being turned into the, gen the draft general plan, we look at those and determine where there are gaps, where there are environmental impacts that are not being addressed by policies and actions included in the general plan. In turn, the EIR, when it provides mitigation measures, will provide those at the policy level. It will suggest new general plan policies, perhaps changes to the county code or ordinance, so that these mitigation measures can be applied across the board to all of the future development projects and county actions that would be subject to the general plan and its EIR. The EIR also will examine alternatives, and alternatives can take a number of forms. Alternatives are intended to reduce environmental effects. It can look at different policies, different actions, rev revisions to the land use map, and it will also look at the no project alternative, which is required by CEQA, and that is what would happen if the county continued with its existing general plan. So the environmental analysis in the EIR doesn't compare the two the existing general plan versus the proposed general plan, but the alternatives analysis does provide you a clear picture of what would happen were you to continue with your existing general plan. And CEQA does require <coughs> that alternatives must be reasonable and they must be designed to avoid or substantially reduce significant impacts. Subsequent projects would be required to go through a project level analysis consistent with requirements of CEQA. As you receive project level development requests, those would have to be analyzed to determine, A, is additional environmental review necessary? Are those included in the scope and the analysis provided in the program EIR? Or are there project level impacts that must be addressed? And if so, then those will be further analyzed. And the analysis addresses the project specific impacts. So it doesn't address everything programmatically again, but rather it looks at the individual projects and looks only at the impacts that were not already disclosed in the EIR for the general plan update. And I'm going to briefly discuss what a master EIR is. And the only reason I'm doing this is it sounds like there may have been some confusion regarding the scope of the general plan EIR and that some project applicants may 
think that there's a project specific analysis included in the general plan EIR. What we're intending to do is a programmatic analysis that doesn't look at individual development projects. Were you to want us to look at individual development projects, which would be a very <coughs> lengthy document, a master EIR is a way to go about doing that, and it's an alternative to a program EIR. It is intended to streamline the later environmental review or approval of projects included within the overall general plan update project. It also, like a program EIR, considers the broad environmental effects of a project or of the proposed <coughs> general plan update. It is used to evaluate subsequent projects and to narrow the analysis being done for subsequent projects. And a master EIR requires that you identify specific subsequent projects that are included in the analysis in the master EIR, you identify any shortfalls in the data or any areas where there's not adequate information for analysis so that you clearly spell out what is and isn't being analyzed. Because of this, you often still are left having to do later analysis. And as I just mentioned, yeah, master EIR does not necessarily preclude preparation of subsequent project level EIRs. If we were to prepare a master EIR that provided project level analysis for some or all of the general plan update applications, we would need to individually analyze each general plan update allocation to identify its specific project level impacts, or we would need direction regarding what environmental issue areas should be included for that specific project. We would then also need to identify the areas where there is not enough information. Either there's not enough information regarding individual projects or there's not available technical information at this time to adequately analyze the environmental effect. Um, some considerations if you're looking at a master EIR include that that would include additional costs for us to do that level of analysis and it would also substantially lengthen the EIR schedule. When you try to put a lot of individual projects into the EIR, you then have to schedule all the analysis for those and things tend to change once they're in there. So it's, it's a much lengthier process. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Uh, until you made that last point, you hadn't taken a breath yet. So, <laughs> uh, the exclamation on the extra cost, I uh, appreciate. The advantages of a program EIR are that there is not a legislated shelf life for a program EIR. CEQA requires that an MEIR after five years be reviewed to ensure that it is still adequate and up to date, whereas there are no such requirements for a program EIR. Also, a program EIR can be used to address a variety of actions considered under the general plan update. It, it can programmatically look at projects that are considered part of the general plan update, whereas a master EIR is limited because you are required to specifically identify the projects that are considered within it. So there's not a lot of flexibility in determining whether or not a project was considered. A program EIR can be prepared more quickly than an MEIR and also at a much lower cost. Now I'll move from the topic of the type of EIR to how we're addressing the general plan update applications. And there are some that are recommended for inclusion in both the general plan update and EIR, some for the EIR only. And then there are the staff's recommendations regarding the six applications that were referred back to staff, and then also the four requests for reconsideration. Back in January, you, the board, provided initial direction to staff and to us how to handle the general plan update applications that have been received during the past several years. The first group of applications were applications that were recommended for the general plan update and draft EIR. Then the second were applications recommended for the general plan update, but not as initially requested. Staff recommended some revisions to those so that they could be included in both the update and the EIR. The third group is applications that were recommended for environmental analysis only. And the fourth was applications that were not recommended for 